within the next few weeks, the Durham Sheriff's Office is going to be deploying new first aid kits, new trauma kits to several divisions within the agency. Uh, right now, the plan is to send these out to the patrol division and maybe several other units as well. We wanted to go over this and make sure everybody knows exactly what's in this and how to use the components of this kit. This is what the kit looks like. It will be stored in the same location in every car, probably somewhere near the headrest on the driver's side. When you open the kit, a lot of different things in here, some of which you may be familiar with. I've already opened this. This is a compression bandage. We'll go over this in detail in just a moment. This is what's called a SAM splint, very useful for fractures of ankles or wrists. These are just some gauze sponges, some alcohol wipes. There is a tourniquet in here, and again, we'll go over that in detail in just a minute. Triangular bandage. An emergency blanket. Antiseptic wipes and band-aids. Banded shears, a Sharpie, some compressed gauze, and then inside the zipper compartment, some gloves, some tape, and an ace bandage. Let's go through these components one at a time. Most of these you've already seen. Some of them you may not have seen before, though. This is what's called a SAM splint. It's very, very useful for ankle fractures, wrist fractures, things of that nature. This is just simply a piece of uh, soft aluminum that's covered with foil. You can unroll it like this, form it into basically a gutter. It bends really easily. And then you just would shape this to a splint that you can put on somebody's arm and secure with uh, gauze or with tape or with something like that to keep a uh, hand immobilized or a uh, wrist or an ankle immobilized. Very useful for ankle fractures. This is the recon tourniquet. And everybody should have, have gone through tourniquet training. This is basically the same as any other tourniquet. Velcro with a windlass to tighten it right here. What I urge everybody to do is when you get this kit, it's going to be shrink wrapped in plastic. What I want you to do is open the plastic, familiarize yourself with the tourniquet, make sure you know how it works and what all the components are. And then when you're finished with it, when you finish staging the tourniquet the way you, you want it, make sure you put it back in this bag that is supplied with it. These tourniquets have a tendency to break down with heat and UV light. We can't do anything about the heat in the patrol car, but we can protect it from the UV light with these uh, Ziploc baggies. Once you get it set up the way you like it set up, make sure that um, you put it back in this bag and then put it back in the pouch. The way I stage these tourniquets is I simply make sure that the loop, the red tab goes through the loop, leave it fairly long like that, and then fold it up and put it in the bag. That tends to be a good way to do it. One of the other things that we have here is with the uh, Sharpie. Of course, anytime you use a uh, tourniquet on somebody, you always document the time you put the tourniquet on. You can document it right here with the Sharpie on the tab. Um, if uh, for some reason you don't have the Sharpie, just write the time on their limb with a ballpoint pen, whatever you have available. The uh, emergency blanket, these things are uh, um, useful for a bunch of different things. Quite frankly, we don't really use them for hypothermia that much. If you have somebody who's got a, uh, a catastrophic abdominal injury, uh, somebody with a evisceration of their abdominal contents, these are good for covering that. Um, if by any chance you're in the position of having to do an emergency childbirth in the field, these are real useful for keeping babies warm. Um, if you're first on the scene of a recovery of a lost person, uh, somebody who may be hypothermic, you can ramp them up in this. It will help contain some of their body heat. If you have to use it to keep a person warm, in addition to wrapping it around their torso, make sure you cover their head as much as possible. Um, people lose most of their body heat through the top of the head, so be sure and protect that if you have to use one of these. Um, 
This is simply compressed gauze. When you open this packet, um, these things can be really difficult to open. Notice where the tabs are on this. You would open it by just peeling this off, and this will become about six feet of gauze. So these can be really useful for controlling bleeding. Some more, uh, some more bandaging material right here. This is uh, simply a triangular bandage. These are useful for securing a splint to an arm. You can use it as a uh, makeshift sling for an elbow fracture or something of that nature. This is what you'll probably use more than anything else, and this is simply what we would call uh, a boo-boo bag. And you've got a couple of band-aids, a couple of little uh, two by two gauze sponges, and some antiseptic wipes in there just for small lacerations, abrasions, anything of that nature. Some alcohol pads for cleaning injuries. Some more small gauze pads right here. A pair of bandage scissors. These are uh, a little smaller than you usually see, but these scissors are awesome. They will cut through just about anything. If you have a, uh, um, a person with an injury to their torso, you need to expose their chest. These things will cut through, um, cut through clothes, through leather jackets. They'll cut through just about anything. Um, an ace wrap, which again is real useful in conjunction with the splint for wrist fractures, ankle fractures, anything of that nature. Then we've got a couple of things here. Um, small bag of exam gloves and a, a small roll of tape. Uh, my suggestion is keep these in the bag, but what I also want you to do is when you can get a chance, swing by one of the uh, local fire departments and get a much larger roll of tape, get at least a two inch roll about this big and also get some of their um, issued gloves because what you'll find is that these gloves are a lot thicker than what come in here and they'll also come about this far up on your arm. And these are a whole lot more useful if you have got a, uh, a messy scene than these smaller exam gloves. So if you get a chance, get some of these and a roll of tape to replace what's in the, uh, in the kit. The, uh, the other thing that we have in the kit is what's called a compression bandage. This is a little bit different from the bandages that you may have seen before, and I'll go through that in detail. Uh, the first thing is when you open this, there's small tabs on the, on the exterior of the bag, and they're right here. I've already opened this, but they're, they're right here, and you would open it by peeling it back, by ripping it open. When you rip it open, you've got a second bag on the inside. This bag is real tough to open, and what you have to do is you've got to crinkle it open like this, and then look for the tab here, and then you open it by peeling it across or ripping it across where the tab is. That's about the only way you can open this. If you try and open it by peeling it back like this or by ripping it where there's no tab, it's simply not going to open, and especially if you've got blood on your hands, your hands are slick, it does not work very well. You've got to look for that tab and then you would rip it open like that. Once you get this open, this is what you come out with, and this is the compression bandage. And uh, Deputy Osborne, if you can slide up a little bit closer, I will show people how to do this. If Deputy Osborne has got an injury to his arm right here. What I want to do is this is the part that goes over the wound. I'll put it directly over the wound like this and then start wrapping it. And then once I get this around, what I would do is I would pull this over like that and then continue to wrap it. And the point of that is that we can put extra pressure on the point of the injury by pulling that pressure lever back and then squeezing it real tight. And then once we've got that on there, there's a small plastic clip here, and we just secure the bandage to his arm with the clip. And that puts a huge amount of pressure on injury. That's almost like a tourniquet, not quite, um, but it will stop just about anything short of a serious arterial bleed. How tight does that feel? It's pretty tight. 
Yeah, it's pretty tight. So we'll go ahead and take that off. The last thing in here, and it's something that is not in this kit, but I'd suggest that everybody get a chance, swing by one of the fire stations and pick one up. These are what are called chest seals. And you would use this for any, any type of a uh, sucking or bubbling chest wound. Um, any type of penetrating injury, basically from the lower part of your abdomen to your neck, needs to be covered with an occlusive dressing. Um, there are plenty of things we can use in here for an occlusive dressing if we don't have one of these. Probably one of the best things to use if you have a person with a gunshot wound to their torso or a stab wound or any type of penetrating injury to their torso, the best way to put an occlusive dressing on it, if you don't have one of these, just get your plain Ziploc bag that's in this kit and your two inch tape. Then what you would do is slap this right over the side of the injury. Get your gauze, wipe the blood off, slide this right over the top of the injury, and then you may have to uh, um, help secure it with your hand. And that will keep a lung from collapsing if you've got a, uh, a damage to the chest cavity. Um, I think that covers most of this. When you get deployed this stuff, when you get issued this stuff, go through it take everything out, play around with it, make sure you know what things are. If you've got any questions, give me a call at any time. Uh, more than happy to go through this on an individual basis.